I'm Ima. Welcome back to another video in the series of converting our patio to a three season sunroom. In my last video, we had my sister and niece, uh, Kaka, uh, Amira, and her boyfriend Teddy here, and they were helping dig in holes so that we could lay concrete footings to support the floating deck that our sunroom was going to be on. And uh, so far, my dad has done four of those holes. Uh, these four one, two, three, four. And Teddy did this hole right here. Even Teddy who is probably the most athletic guy I know. Even after doing that one hole, he said his back hurt the entire day after. Imagine how my dad felt after doing all four of those holes. So today, my dad decided to go to a wedding, and I want to surprise him and impress him by uh, helping out by digging this hole. And you know, so far, pretty, pretty well done by my standards. And my dad came home, he saw the hole, he said, good job, uh, but he did it wrong. And it's okay, it's okay for him to say I, I did it wrong. I'm not gonna get my feelings hurt by it. Um, and he said that I could improve, I could have uh, improved the way that I did it. Uh, the first thing he noticed was that I used the wrong shovel. You can see that um, it has no teeth on it. It's not sharp, so you can't really dig into the dirt. And really, I should have used this shovel. Uh, and we'll get to, we'll get to this later. But actually, if you watched my previous video, you would have seen that Teddy used this shovel which it's not for digging dirt. This is for, for carrying stuff. So uh, I can only imagine uh, how it felt for him to do that. And that's probably why his back hurt the day after. But in this video, I'm going to go over, me, my dad's gonna show me how to do the correct way to uh, dig this hole because we're trying to dig a 42 inch deep hole. And, it, and there's a bit of procedure that's required for that. And one of those procedures is like making steps which I'll show you after my dad helps me fix uh, the hole. But for now, I just want to cover uh, all of my uh, missteps in trying to dig this hole. All right, so we're back. It's a few minutes later and my dad has fixed up the hole. As you can see, it looks way different now. And it looks just like the drawing that we have up here. And my dad's done all of this for a specific reason, to make it easier and to make it less painful on himself and me. So let's talk about the different pieces. First, you can see that this has sort of steps so that you can walk down easily. He's actually uh, filled some of the dirt back in uh, and he's put um, so, so these bricks right here in order to prevent this uh, from caving in. Because as you can see from the bottom, it has kind of fallen out because some of the rocks have fallen out. All right, so let's get to why this is easier. Or actually, let me talk about what the plan is. We're gonna dig uh, about like I said, 42 inches down, and we're gonna fill it in with about 36 inches of concrete. The goal is to get this uh, ring under the main joists. And we're actually, this is important because these joists, we're probably gonna double them up because right here is gonna be a door. But after we fill the concrete, uh, all right, never mind. My dad didn't fill up the dirt. Uh, he didn't, this is actually a new pile. He put some of the dirt back there. And this stir is actually coming, uh, came from the new hole that he dug. But anyway, getting into why this is easier. The reason why is because you don't have to do as much bending in order to, uh, uh, to get the dirt. So the way I did it before, if I, if I want to get any dirt that's down here, I'd have to bend over and just reach my uh, hand into there. This way, it's much more easier. You can take some dirt. And then instead of having to um, like catapult it onto the pile, you can just um, move your body and then just let go of it. So it's less work to move the, uh, the dirt. And also, if, even if you don't use a shovel, so if you use this uh, excavator right here, much easier. And this especially works if you're a short person, because a short person, this is at the right waist level for me to not have to move my body that much in order to put the dirt down. So let's say you don't dig steps and you only just dig the hole from the base level. You have to do this. Yep. And then, ugh. and you have to move your body a whole ton and you have to have to bend your back. So imagine if my dad did that the entire time, his back would be hurting probably for years. And 
and I guess this makes this makes sense scientifically because you have to move a ton of dirt, a, a lot of height, a lot of distance, which means that you have to exert more energy in order to move all of it. Yeah, so back when my dad was studying industrial engineering, I guess they don't call it industrial engineering, they call it human engineering, they didn't teach him how to dig a hole. And I guess part of the reason why is probably because they use machines to dig holes. But now they talk mostly about ergonomics and carpal tunnel. Where for this kind of job, you don't really need to, uh, a degree or anything. You just need common sense. You need to step back and look at how to make the situ situation best for your needs. And I mean, digging a hole, you can do it however you want. But in our case, we kept in mind that we're short people. We're like five feet tall. And we only have a limited range of tools available to us. So as you can see, we have a pretty nice hole dug. And my dad didn't, my dad didn't get this method from any YouTube video. He just took a step back. He looked at how to do the, how, how he should do the situation. And then he implemented it. As you can see right here. All right, so we're here uh, about half an hour later and we've dug all the way down to where we need to. Let me just take out my handy dandy tape measure. And we're gonna go down here. And below, we have dug about 42 inches. So I made a mistake earlier, I said 36 inches. Our goal is actually to uh, dig about 42 inches down. So now, this is the idea. The frost line is 36 inches below. And then we're digging down 42 inches below because you always want to uh, put the concrete below the frost line. Because if you put it above or at, there's really no point. So, here we have the concrete that we're going to pour. I mean, no, not the concrete. We're the, this is the tube for the concrete. And at the bottom, we have triangles cut out. And the reason for these triangles is because like this drawing describes, we're going to have some concrete that spills out at the bottom. And I guess that helps with uh, securing it. Because when you put the dirt back on and it gets on top, it keeps it in. So the idea is because we're going to double up these joists, we're going to have this sort of at, at the edge. Right under the uh, second joist. So there's probably going to be another joist right here. So the idea is that both of them are supported by this one pier. Or this one footing. And as you can see, it looks like it fits right. After that, after we lay the concrete, we're gonna put some homemade rebar in because you know, rebar is expensive. But we're actually gonna do that step in the next video where I show you how to lay the concrete for this concrete footing and use homemade rebar. But for now, I'm Ayman and today, I talked about uh, how I made a mistake in uh, digging a hole that was 42 inches deep uh, and how we readjust that error and we made it more easier and more simpler to uh, dig a 42 inch deep hole. I'm Ayman, thanks for watching. Please like and comment, subscribe, and look at our videos on I and Ayman, especially the videos in our series of converting our patio to a three season sunroom. And make sure to check out our next video on laying the concrete for these footings. And I'll see you in the next one. Signing out. Peace.